one of the liabilities of the preaching profession is that you begin to look at the whole world as sermon material. You clip an interesting article out of the newspaper in the morning and file it away thinking, that'll preach. You jot down some notes after a conversation at the hardware store thinking, that'll preach. You wipe a tear away in the privacy of a darkened movie theater thinking, <clears throat> that'll preach, that'll preach. And if you read the Gospels, you see that Jesus suffered from the same affliction. Look at the birds of the air, he said. They'll preach. Consider the lilies of the field. They'll preach too. Mustard seeds, fig trees, pearls, and prodigal sons. In the mind of the preacher, they all become sermon material. Happened to me the last time I preached on the blind Bartimaeus passage. I was pastor of First Baptist Church in Washington, D.C. in those days. And in my notes on that sermon, I found this. I think I saw Bartimaeus last Thursday afternoon. I was driving home through the Adams Morgan neighborhood and there he was at the intersection of 18th Street and Columbia Road standing in front of McDonald's. He was wearing sunglasses and an old felt hat. He had a white cane in one hand, a handful of change in the other. It was a warm day. I had my windows rolled down and I could hear him jingling that change in his hand, trying to arouse the generosity of perfect strangers. I did a double take because I had just been thinking about Bartimaeus and there he was, or someone very much like him. As the light turned green and I drove through the intersection, it all began to unroll in my mind, blind Bartimaeus, the DC version. In this version of the story, Jesus wasn't going from Jericho up to Jerusalem, but from Adams Morgan over to Capitol Hill. He and his disciples had spent the night in Rock Creek Park, and they were just getting up off the ground, moving slowly, their joints stiff and aching. But the sun was shining, and the warmth began to seep into their bones. They could feel their blood begin pumping. They stopped by McDonald's for a cup of coffee. No sooner had they gone in than people started whispering, isn't that Jesus? I think that's Jesus. And within minutes, a big crowd had gathered, even at that time of morning, so that people were pushing and shoving, and Bartimaeus wanted to know what's going on. It's Jesus, somebody said. And that was all it took. Bartimaeus had heard about Jesus, heard that he fed 5,000 people with five loaves of bread and two little fish, that he had cured a leper and walked on water, but most importantly to Bartimaeus, that he had healed a blind man. The way Bartimaeus heard the story, Jesus took the man off away from the crowd by himself, and then he spit on his fingertips and touched the blind man's eyes. When he asked him if he could see, the man said, well, I, I see people, but they look like trees walking around. And so Jesus touched his eyes again, and this time the man could see everything clearly. Everything clearly. Bartimaeus had gone over the story again and again, working those details over in his mind the way he clinked those coins in his hand. And now here he was, that same Jesus right here at McDonald's. Jesus, he said, struggling to believe it. Jesus? Yes, somebody said, Jesus. Now, hush. But Bartimaeus didn't hush. He knew that this might be the only chance he would ever get. He began to shout at the top of his lungs, begging Jesus to have mercy on him. He banged on the plate glass window with his stick. He waved his arms and yelled. He tried to force his way inside. The people who were standing near the door began to shove him back roughly, tell him to be quiet, but that only made it worse. Afraid that he wouldn't get to see Jesus at all, he began to swing his stick around like a lunatic, threatening to crack some skulls if he didn't get to see the teacher. People were ducking, running for cover. The manager called 911. Jesus, of course, 
was taking the whole scene in from a table near the front of the restaurant. Bring him here, he said at last. What? Bring him here. By this time, a couple of burly police officers were already dragging Bartimaeus down the street, but the disciples came out saying, wait, wait, the teacher wants to see him. And the policeman let him go. Bartimaeus got to his feet and charged back up the street, bumping into people and cracking his head on the glass door of McDonald's. He yanked his cap off, threw it down on the ground, and swore softly under his breath. The disciples took him inside, and there he was, standing in front of Jesus, gasping for breath and trembling, holding on to his cane to steady himself. Everything was suddenly quiet, everyone waiting to see what would happen. You could have heard a French fry drop. Jesus looked Bartimaeus up and down and then asked, what do you want me to do for you? Bartimaeus was surprised by the question. I mean, wasn't it obvious? The dark glasses, the white cane, the lump on the forehead. He reached up with a trembling hand and, and took off the glasses so that Jesus could see the sightless eyes rolling in their sockets. Please, sir, he said, I want to see again. And then he waited to hear the sound of Jesus spitting on his fingertips, waited to feel him touch his eyes. But instead, Jesus simply said, go your faith has made you well. And that's when it happened. That's when the flash of light exploded inside Bartimaeus' head, when a kaleidoscope of colors began to shift and fall into recognizable shapes and patterns. That's when he saw Jesus himself sitting there in front of him, drinking coffee out of a styrofoam cup. For the longest time, Bartimaeus just stood there staring his eyes focused, his vision clear. He wanted to burn the image of this man on his brain like a photograph. But Jesus finished his coffee, nodded to his disciples, got up and began to move to the door. And when he did, Bartimaeus found himself moving right along with him. When Jesus went out and turned right on Columbia Road, heading towards 16th Street, Bartimaeus fell in behind him and followed. How could he do anything else? This was the man who had given him his sight back. And what if that were only the beginning? The crowd emptied out of McDonald's, moved on down the street behind Jesus, and the manager, suddenly alone in his restaurant, bent down to retrieve an abandoned cane and a pair of dark glasses. Now, that's not exactly the way Mark tells the story but it's the way he would have told it if it had happened last week in Washington. And what I've noticed about this story in the retelling is the apparent absurdity of Jesus' question. What do you want me to do for you? Isn't it obvious there's a, a blind man standing in front of him? What else could he want but to see again? But what I've learned in my years of ministry is that our deepest needs are not always our most obvious ones. For instance, when someone walks into my office, I often ask, as Jesus did, what can I do for you? And sometimes this person will say, well, I've been under a lot of stress at work. You wouldn't believe the stress I've been under. I've been working all the time, 12 hours a day, 14 hours a day trying to get my work done. As we talk further, I, I learn how hard he's been working, but also how much he wants to succeed. 